You've heard me say before, I'm sure, that the most popular game that has ever been played on planet Earth is not poker or Parcheesi or Monopoly. It's not baseball, basketball, football, soccer. It's the blame game. What we do not choose to take responsibility for, which is to take the fullness of responsibility for our experience of life. When I don't want to accept that the responsibility is mine for my experience of heaven on earth or the lack of it, I need to find someone or something to project that responsibility onto. If I am not in heaven, if heaven is here and I ain't in it, it must be someone's fault. It must be something's fault. It must be just the way it is. And so me not accepting the fullness of my responsibility for the creation of my own experience, look for someone out there. And there are so many places to look. I can look at, first of all, my family of origin. I can look at my beginning years of life and what I had or didn't have available to me. I can look at the racism I've experienced since I can remember being a little kid. I can look at the inequity. I can look at the appearance of lack or limitation around funding. My parents couldn't afford me to send me to a good school. The neighborhood I lived in was dangerous. I can look at my exes. All my exes don't live in Texas. They live in my mind. I can blame them for failing up, to, failing to live up to my expectations of who they should be. I can find all kinds of evidence that support my testimony. Oh, woe is me. As I believe said through my mouth during the meditation. That Jesus speaks through a course of miracles saying, this is one of the ways we demonstrate the blame game. We hold up a banner that declares, see how I suffer at your hands. We can do this with mom and dad. We can do this with our significant others. We can do it with our teachers. We can do it with anybody and everybody. Because in that moment and in that mind frame, we are refusing to take the full responsibility for our experience of life. And so you have heard me remind you what I am reminded of myself by that voice in me that speaks in ways that are intended to set me free. Little whispers, Carlos Wayne. It's not what she did. It's what you did with what? she did. Carlos Wayne, it's not what he did or they did. It's what you are doing with what 
he did or they did. The only way out is for me to take responsibility. I don't have to take responsibility for what occurred. But how it impacted me is my responsibility. What I do with what occurred, that is my J-O-B. That's my territory. That's where I have dominion. All of the dominion and all of the power over my experience of what is is mine to own. He, she, they, they can't make me mad. I can choose to be mad. One day I was really, this is decades ago. I was really, really enjoying my belief that a group of people had made me mad. And just quite honestly, I was enjoying being mad. I had so much adrenaline running through me. I had the exhilaration of self-righteous anger pouring through my veins. I was justified for being mad. And I was actually saying it out loud. Yes, I'm mad. Yes, I'm mad. Of course I'm mad. And then I get interrupted by that voice inside me that speaks in ways that encourage my freedom. And it was just a whisper. And it tickled me and made me laugh and laugh and laugh when it said what it said. There I am out loud telling somebody on the phone, of course I'm mad. I'm really, really, really mad. Who wouldn't be mad? And the voice said, Carlos Wayne, do you know that the word mad means crazy? Like to say that you're gone mad is to say you've gone crazy. And why is your being mad crazy? It's because you could choose any other experience right now other than being mad so when you have fully milked your self-righteous indignation come to remember mad means crazy crazy that you would choose this instead of peace Crazy that in choosing this, you are shouting out to the universe, I am powerless. Salvation is an inside job. Being free of captivity. Captivity in upset. Captivity in reactivity. Captivity in sadness, in despair and thoughts of retaliation. It's an inside job for me to be free. There is work for me to do, not on them, on me. My sister, I don't know where she got it, but going back maybe 30 or 40 years ago. I hope I get this right, because I haven't even thought of it in 30 years. 
She said, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. And to remember, the only thing I can change is me. That's just the truth. How many hours have we spent trying and trying and trying and trying and praying and praying and praying and praying? praying and affirming and affirming for someone or something else to change so that I can be free. I do a teaching session with a group of people. It's called discipleship training. And a couple of the people began prodding me recently can you teach about boundaries and protecting ourselves? Can you teach distancing from people whose energy is not uplifting? Can you give us a green light to back away from people you say that I can only be as close to God as I am to the person I hold at greatest distance. Can you teach us that we need tools to feel safe? And that it's okay to notice when we don't feel safe and to get away from the people or the circumstances or the things that rattled our sense of safety. I said, teaching people about keeping themselves safe and avoiding circumstances, conditions, people who rattle our sense of safety is not my ministry. There are people who do very well on teaching deeply about boundaries and why we should have them and how to increase them and how to protect yourself from the toxicity of toxic people. That's not my calling. A minister has to preach the message given to him or her to preach. And that is not my calling. I do not believe personally that any measures of avoidance and any measures that are about how to feel safe by manipulating anyone or any condition in the surround works. I don't believe that I can feel safer if I get another bolt lock on my door, if I get better security cameras guarding my property. I do not believe that I can increase my feeling of safety by avoiding the presence of those who I have judged to be toxic people and distancing. I believe that these things in the surround that I am doing to try to keep myself safe actually, for me, have the opposite effect. I believe they are in conflict with feeling safe. The more locks I get, the more security systems I get, the more and more people I avoid, the more and more situations I avoid. The more distancing I do, for me, that wouldn't sponsor my feelings safe. Those things, to me, sponsor my being convinced that I'm not safe. 
I said, the only way that any of us can feel safe is to know we are safe. How can I deepen knowing I'm safe? In another way, other than manipulating my surround. One way for me this church speaks what is called four truths. They did not originate with my sister who brought them here, my sister Rhonda who brought them here years ago. They originated with a minister called Joseph Prince. He is a minister in Singapore. He's not a unity minister. He's more from a more traditional calling. But the four truths that he speaks are I am greatly blessed. I am highly favored. I am deeply loved. And I am completely protected. This is the truth that sets me free. Time and time and time again. My safety and my feeling of security can only truly be sponsored by my knowing. It occurred to me when we spoke the final unity principle about activating what we know, activating the truth, activating the principle. It is sponsored by our prayer for protection. And just as I noticed that the people who were wanting me to teach more about outer protective measures, how to surround myself in white light if so-and-so's on the Zoom this morning, how to surround myself with white light and put a shield around me when I run into so-and-so. No, not for me. For me, I must be transformed by the renewing of my mind. If I know who I am, I will feel safe. So knowing, hearing, reciting, having it as your mantra. The light of God surrounds me. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds me. I am the love of God. The power of God protects me. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over me. I am the presence of God. Wherever I am, God is, and all is well. Imagine knowing that to be your truth eternally, forever always, in all ways. I'd rather know these truths are true than to get another bolt from my back door, a more state-of-the-art security system, Avoiding and distancing. I want to be 
other than a reed shaking in the wind. I want to be like a tree planted by the living water that cannot be moved. How am I to ever feel safe? Answer, know you're safe. A song came to me when I was a teenager from a musical play I had written. The guy singing the song was a fundamental church deacon who had backslid, as they call it. He had gone back to drinking. And he's staggering through the street. And he's singing his song. I called on my Jesus. Jesus said to call on me. I asked the Lord to free me. He said to me, you're free. Now, I wonder what he meant by that. Amen.